The aspect that, uh, that I get a lot of questions around is moisture buildup. And believe me, it's a struggle that I've been having for years. And there are some things around it that you can deal with. And there are all different types of uh, solutions that I've read about and talked to other flute players about. They go all the way from you know, putting a sponge inside the mouthpiece and uh, putting in a, uh, a, you know, a swab, swabbing it out all the time. But without getting into real technical aspects of this, I think uh, there are some things you can do that will help without having to uh, change the, the look or the, the structure of the flute. And one thing to do is to make, uh, see where you play, okay? At night, if you go outside and it's cool outside, it's going to have an effect because the condensation from your breath is going to be immediate. Um, same thing if you pick up a flute that's cold. In other words, it's, uh, it's a flute that's uh, not warmed up. It's been uh, sitting in the trunk of your car. The wood is cold, and as soon as your warm breath hits, it's going to condense, and you're going to get moisture buildup. And what moisture buildup does, from here to here, and I'm sure you figured this out, but I'm going to explain it anyway. Uh, from here to here, you're going to, get, as your breath goes in and it cools off, it starts to condense the moisture and it starts to sit into the bottom of the flute. After a period of time, that moisture gets blown up into the air passage, which is very tiny, right in front of the, uh, the fipple, in front of the bird. And what happens there is that you get uh, bubbles and uh, little droplets that build up and they block the air passage. Bingo, no sound. And I'm sure you've come across that. What happens is when you first start to play, the other aspect of this is that our mouth muscles are not used to going like this. So the muscles are a little bit lazy and after a period of time they slack off and you get a more of a, a, a buildup of moisture in your mouth which in turn as the breath goes through picks up the moisture and blows it into the flute. After playing for a couple of months, you're going to, you're going to build up those muscles and it's not going to happen as, 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 ra as radically or as frequently. So that's one aspect of it. The other side of it is um, what I, we recommend and we found is a real good solution is to create what they call in the flute world an amateur. And what it is, um, this is a, uh, an, on the flutes that I make, they're fairly good size uh, openings, three eighths of an inch is, the, is the, uh, the mouth opening. But we don't need that large of an opening necessarily, but it does give you more versatility to be able to play different things, how to blow into it. Now, what happens is most of us tend to take the flute, put it in our mouth, open our mouth, and surround the entire hole. So what you're doing is you're really blowing all of your breath straight into the hole, okay? Instead, I would like for you to, uh, to try something different. Close your mouth, take the flute and put it up against your closed mouth, then take your upper lip and place it, leave, it clo leave the flute up against the upper lip, and allow the upper lip to close half of the hole, at least half. Then take the lower lip and wrap it around the bottom of the flute. So now what you've done is you've taken the upper lip, closed a good portion of the hole, and taken your lower lip to seal it. So now your opening is half or even less. It does two things. It, um, your, your muscles and your, um, your lips tend to really constrict the airflow. So you're building more back pressure, which in turn, uh, takes the, the, allows the breath to be more controlled, so you're not just going whoosh, all the way down into the bore. Less moisture going in, okay? The other aspect of this is you're going to get a better uh, tonguing effect. You're, you're much sharper, much crisper. Try it. I think you'll really like it. Now, I, I know there's some flutes out there that have very, very tiny uh, openings. With that, obviously, it, it's already, that's already existing. So uh, that's one way of, of dealing with it with small openings. The reason that um, uh, I like a flute with a larger opening because it gives you a little bit more effect that you have the ability to uh, create more effects and you can create the opening the way you want it. Whereas with a, with a small opening, you get less moisture, but you have, there's a certain limitation to it. You're, you're stuck with that size. So, but the, the moisture issue is, it's ongoing. Every flute, every uh, musical instrument, no matter what, you're going to have an issue around uh, moisture. Uh, your, um, your wind instruments that are metal uh, and flutes, uh, transverse flutes that played like this, a silver flute, they have spit valves, they have ways to re release the moisture. 
Uh, but even then, they deal with moisture. So it, it's not something you're going to eliminate completely. It's just what it is. So, but we're, just, we're all constantly coming up with ideas and suggestions on how to eliminate that, how to eliminate it. And play with it. The more you play, you'll find the less moisture you're going to get. Now, swabbing the inside help, does help. Um, when, what happens is if you take a, a small dowel and cut a slot in the end of it and put a, a, a little swab on the end, you can go ahead and, and ream it out. So there are various ways that you can go ahead and continue. But what I found, when I'm playing and it closes up, I place my finger right in front of the fipple, like this. So the opening is closed, half closed, with my finger. So when I blow into it, I'm not making a shrill sound. And I blow into it very hard, and it blows that uh, droplet right out. Then the other aspect to that is, what I do is, just to make sure, I'll take the flute and I'll just shake it out really well, just to get, it, to get the rest of the moisture out. Um, I know my friends don't like that when I do that in their home on the carpet, but just do it outside. At any rate, it does come out. The interesting thing is it's really not saliva. It is moisture that's being picked up. It's not, it's not like the, the, you know, it's nothing really disgusting or anything. So, uh, But anyway, the, the moisture thing is an ongoing issue. Just deal with it in terms of creating an armature. Go ahead and uh, develop your mouth muscles by playing more. It's going to, over time, it's going to be less and less. And then also blow out the moisture every once in a while. So that, uh, especially between songs.